The channel is closing in on 50,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already, be sure to hit that button, it would mean a lot. Throughout the years, aircraft manufacturers have undertaken several concepts, development studies, and much more. In some cases, these studies will eventually turn into flying and successful aircraft types. However, in other cases, they'll fade into obscurity, as covered on numerous occasions here on the channel with failed concepts. The continued evolution of Airbus's A320 family over the span of several decades has honestly been a remarkable journey to follow. What started as just an aircraft has now become a pivotal part of numerous airlines' fleets. The ongoing enhancements of this series have also opened up new horizons for airlines, offering them not only fresh possibilities, but in a manner that is efficient. Boeing's decision to not move ahead with its own middle-of-the-market airliner following its own persistent troubles, which we know occurred towards the latter stages of the 2010s and early 2020s, is arguably one of the biggest opportunities that Airbus had themselves to pounce. They were able to grab more of the middle they were able to grab more of the middle of the market sector uncontested, and that has led to further development. Introducing the Airbus A322, or 22, a prospective aircraft type that has been under consideration for some time, as the manufacturer strategized its next move in an industry that obviously demands consistent innovation, the A322 emerged as a potential stretch of the Airbus A321. This would be a departure from the previous approach undertaken by Airbus with the A320 that we had seen, which involved the downside towards the A319 and the A318. Essentially think of this as a further stretch. In 2021, Bloomberg reported interest in repeating the success of adding new efficient engines to the A320 body, by for an A322 introducing new wings on a new aircraft that would see these composite wings bring affordable and also accessible travel with the ability to upscale production to high rates long into the future. Sue Partridge, the leader of the Wings of Tomorrow program at the time, said that a new era of wings was quickly approaching and just like what we're seeing with the folding wingtips on the Boeing 777X, which which is still upcoming, the next era of aircraft must see changes, and Airbus needs to be at the forefront of that to ensure it does not lose market share. This can be reaffirmed through new studies at Airbus and also other leading manufacturers that explore initiatives such as the trust braced wing design at Boeing and many others. All very exciting and also arguably promising, but how much will actually make it into our industry flying with passengers remains to be seen. What we can't ignore though is these concepts and these studies, and even if they don't make it, their crucial development and all also, results from the studies will be important in fueling the next era. A stretched A321, again dubbed the A322, was something Airbus had been exploring and gauging interest from critical customers for an extended period. However, nothing significant was really ever revealed regarding specifications, with Airbus naturally being pretty tight-lipped about a study that obviously wasn't guaranteed to be released. There was no point parading it around massively. What was at least speculated, keyword speculated, was just how many additional seats may be available thanks to the stretch. This was never confirmed, but per key analysts at Bloomberg and others, their belief was that as many as up to four extra rows of seating could have been available on the aircraft. Now, this offers fantastic opportunities, whether you're looking at adding four rows of economy seats in a 3-3 configuration, or potentially looking at extending or adding an upper class, depending again on how the respective airline customer chooses to configure the aircraft type. You could, for instance, not lose any economy class seats, but add four rows of a higher class to generate additional revenue. This is the possibilities that a stretch would have given your customers. It's what we're seeing with other aircraft types, think of the space on the Airbus A380 and the possibilities that customers have been able to undertake from that. 
So what happened to this prospective A322? Similar to many other studies that I've covered here on the channel, it faded into the sunset with not really any further mentions that had any true backing behind them. While you can't rule out something such as an A322 long into the future, as it does generally seem like a rather easy aircraft to pursue for the manufacturer over, say, a clean sheet, there may be an appetite in the future, but not now. The belief is, at least, that the A321 XLR was the peak of what is required in the series for airline customers. Again, I want to reiterate that that is for now. If there was a desire for, say, a larger capacity aircraft over the A321 XLR, the European manufacturer would probably ideally send their customers to larger aircraft in its diverse portfolio, which obviously offers an aircraft such as the A330neo. If you do move ahead with a type such as the A322, there is a very valid concern that maybe you negate the A330neo's purpose, especially if customers are after that additional capacity. I'm not saying they're the same aircraft type, I'm just saying that some customers may consider moving down to an A322 as adequate and say just sticking with the A350 and then your A330neo becomes obsolete. Despite no A322, Airbus has been able to still pounce on interest in the middle of the market sector by the continuous development and redefinement of its single aisle aircraft. With the upcoming debut of the A321 XLR, customers can now deploy this aircraft on an almost 9-hour flight once it is certified. This will allow airline customers the prospect of reaching new markets without needing a wide body at their disposal. The XLR extends upon the success and enhancements seen with the A321 LR, and while it has had its delays, it promises a lot, and generally like I keep saying, new opportunities, because that is true. Can the decision to move forward with no A322 at this point deemed to be the right one? While typically posed in forums, day-to-day -day life, and also between analysts, these questions are always tricky to answer, as there are obviously multiple angles to explore. But if Airbus pitched the aircraft to customers and they didn't receive enough firm interest at the time to proceed, then not moving ahead can obviously be deemed as the right decision, as it would be a failed investment at that point in time. Equally, like I've said on multiple occasions as well, that doesn't mean that the plane may not be required someday in the future. And the studies undertaken during this period could very well help develop future aircraft in the single aisle market too. A lot regarding the A322 would ride on the continued development of technology too. A lot regarding the A322's potential further development would ride on new technology, and it seemed apparent from the beginning that such a plane wouldn't just be a standard extension. Maybe if it would, then it would all be possible. The idea is this aircraft would bring new features, such as a key focus on the development of its wings. So maybe at some point in time, as technology does progress and the industry continues adapting, such a plane could very well be required. But for now at least, talk has quietened down. As Airbus focuses on flying more sustainably, getting the A321 XLR out to customers, and continuing to assert its dominance in other sectors. If you have any thoughts, you're more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel, it is greatly appreciated. Do take care and do also be safe. I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow for your latest industry developments. And we'll fly